Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very very complex and imaginary equation. We have ln on one side and then i pi over 3 on the other side. Basically have ln of iz plus the square root of 1 minus z squared equals i pi over 3 and we're going to be solving for z. i is a constant, it's an imaginary unit whose square always equals negative 1. Or you could call it one of the square roots of negative 1, which helps us solve some equations such as x squared plus 1 or z squared plus 1 equals 0. All right, I'll be presenting two methods and please don't get mad at me for the second method because it's going to be very interesting. Anyways, I don't want to say the word, but you get the idea, hopefully. So the first method, I want to use the definition of natural log. The base is e, so it's not written most of the time, right? I mean, never, almost never. But you can write it if you want, like log base e. It will be ln, like. But most of the time we write as ln, and unfortunately, Wolfram Alpha and some textbooks write it as log log, which kind of is confusing because I use log without the base for base 10 because we have a base 10 system, right? It's called the decimal system. Anyways, that's a different story. Now let's get back to the problem. So using the definition of natural log, we can basically write what's inside the log as e to the power, notice that this is the base, i pi over 3. This is awesome because it really simplifies the problem. First of all, we get out of ln, which is nice, and put it in an exponential format, which is Euler's formula or polar form. Again, that's beautiful because of Euler, and it's just beautiful. Anyways, but we have some complications, such as radicals. But don't worry, we're going to be able to solve them. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first uh, write this in standard form, right? What does e to the power i pi over 3 mean? Well, e to the power i theta means cosine theta plus i sine theta, thanks to Euler. This is just mind-blowing, right? Don't you think? It's amazing. And you can definitely prove it. Uh, and so we're going to replace theta with pi over 3. Let's do it first, and then we'll get to work. So we have this radical thing on the left equals. Now, if I write this as cosine of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees. So cosine 60 is the same as sine 30. You should memorize this. And it's 1 half. And sine is going to be root no, no, not root 2, root 3 over 2, okay? These numbers should be familiar to you because if you add their squares, you're going to get 1, right? Now, let's go ahead and set this equal to w. It's one of the cube roots of unity. And you can tell from here, uh, e to the power i, uh, e to the power i times 2 pi n is unity, and this is just one of the, uh, well, it's not one of the cube roots. Sorry about that. It's one of the six roots, or we can say cube roots of negative one. Anyways, so um, I set it equal to W to make it a little easier for my work. And now we're going to go ahead and isolate this. Let's go ahead and first write it as IZ plus the square root of one minus Z squared equals W. Forget about that uh, standard form. And now we want to isolate the radical so we can square both sides because that's going to be helpful, don't you think? And then at this point, uh, let's square both sides. And something interesting is going to happen when you square both sides. There's a reason for that, obviously. But on the right-hand side, you have to be careful. This is a minus b being squared. So it's going to be w squared minus 2wiz. And then plus i squared z squared. But i squared is negative 1. So it's going to turn into minus z squared. Get it? And this is what happens. z squared cancels out, leaving us with something simpler. Nice. Now, my goal is to solve for z, so let's isolate z, put the 2wiz here on the left, and bring the 1 over to the right. And since, kind of like a whiz, like a math whiz, this shows that you should be a math whiz. Anyways, just came up, wasn't planned. Now, since we're trying to solve for z, let's go ahead and isolate it. So let's divide both sides by 2wi. W is known, so we can go ahead and plug it in from here, right? Let's go ahead and do that. Um, I don't know if there's a shortcut here, but I guess we could separate this too, but I don't think that's going to be a huge improvement. Let's go ahead and plug it in. W is 1 half 
plus root 3 over 2i. Remember that from cosine of 60 and uh, sine of 60. We're going to square this, subtract 1 from it. And at the bottom, we're going to multiply 2i by w again. Let's just write the 2i first. If you do the math, <laughs> oh, we always do math, right? You're going to be getting something like this in the numerator. You're going to get uh, negative um, 3 halves, right? Uh, plus uh, root 3 over 2, so it's going to give you 1 fourth minus 3 fourths, that's going to give you negative 1 half, and negative 1 half minus 1 is just going to give you negative 3 halves, and then plus root 3 over 2i. Interestingly, that comes up one more time. And of course, we're supposed to divide it by this expression here. Let's go ahead and distribute. First of all, if you distribute the 2, you're going to get rid of the 2s. When you distribute the i, you're going to get i minus root 3 or minus root 3 plus i. This is a little better. Now, this expression might look a little confusing to you. You might leave it at that, but don't. One way to handle this is multiply by the conjugate, and you'll get a simpler answer, definitely. That's one way to go. And be careful, the conjugate will be negative root 3 minus i, not i minus i plus root 3. Make sense? You always change the imaginary part. The real part stays the same. And then you can just work it out. But I have a better idea. Here's what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to uh, factor out a 1 half here. And that's going to give me negative 3 plus root 3i. And I'm going to do this in two steps so it doesn't become like a, you know, kind of like a difficult task. So I'm going to try to simplify that, okay? First take out 1 half. And then notice that something else can be factored out. And that thing is... Do you see what I'm talking about? Root 3. Why? Because both of these are divisible, sort of, right? So we can kind of take out a root 3, but make sure it's positive. And inside, you're going to get negative root 3 to get a negative 3, right? Plus i, just one i. Divided by the same thing. Awesome. This is really cool because now we can go ahead and cancel these out and end up with the answer. And the answer will be in a super simple form. Root 3 over 2. That's it. No i. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick because second method uh, kind of depends on memorization and I'm pretty sure many people will not memorize it, but I just wanted to share with you. It's not something that I memorized either, but I saw it in a book by Shalms. You probably know that was series, hopefully, right? They have a lot of problems on complex numbers and we'll do those, okay? Anyways, so the formula says sine inverse of z. By the way, this means the arc sine of z for those of you who are not familiar with the notation, and if you want me to use parentheses, I'll do that for you, no worries. There's a formula for this, in terms of z, and guess what that is equal to? You'll be surprised. ln iz plus the square root of 1 minus i, 1 minus z squared, divided by i. Isn't that amazing? And you know where the problem, this, the idea for this problem comes from? Exactly from this formula. But that ended up being the second method because it's, it kind of looks simpler. Sort of, right? So we were given this equation, right? Now, if you divide both sides by i, you're going to get an i here, and this i will disappear. And guess what this is equal to? This is equal to the arc sine of z. So if arc sine of z is pi over 3, this just means that sine pi over 3 is z. And as you know, sine pi over 3 is the root 3 over 2 because it's the sine of 60 degrees or the cosine of 30 degrees. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.